Good morning sports fans, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel for another fun little tutorial. My name is Saadi and today we're making a cartoon 2D explosion in Fusion. And as usual, the project file is attached so you can work with me. Let's create a project at 1080 resolution and 30 frames per second. Grab a Fusion composition and let's go to the Fusion tab. Shift spacebar, BG. Usually that's how most compositions will start. Shift spacebar, MO. That's media out. So you got your two main nodes here. Let's create a particle system, PEM, a particle render, PRN, and they will automatically get connected. Let's go ahead and click on P emitter and go to the region tab right here. It's the fourth one. Now you can make the uh, sphere larger or smaller by using the size parameter here, or you can do it with the view controls on screen as well. So what I'm going to do is change the size to 0 0.25. Now, if you look over here in the inspector, there's five tabs. The three tabs that you'll be using most of the time are the emitter controls, the style, and the region. Region controls where the particles come from. Style controls what the particle sprites look like. A sprite is the actual particle itself. And the emitter controls control the behavior of the whole particle system, like how many particles you want, how long you want them to last, their default movement, and so on. Let's go to the style tab, and we're going to tell the system what the particle sprite should look like. So this drop-down menu where it says style, I'm going to choose Engon, which is a geometric shape. And as you can see here, you have these stars, you can control their sides and so on. I'm going to click on the last one, which is a circle. I'm going to close the style, then go to color. In color, I have some options. So for now, I'm going to leave the color of the sprite white. I'm going to go to size, make the size six. And then next to size is size variance. So I'm going to say two. What that means is that the sprite size will be mostly six. Some of them will be 6 minus 2, meaning 4. And some of them will be 6 plus 2, meaning 8. Next, I'm going to go to the fade controls. So if I go all the way to the start where the particles are just emitting now, you can see if I turn up the fade, see how the fade affects the transparency of the particle as it's coming into view? So that's what that is doing. Okay, I'm going to set this to 0.1. And then for the fade out, I'm going to set maybe 0.7. So this is going to be our basic style for now. Let's go to the emitter controls. And the emitter controls are basically going to give you some basic controls over the whole system. Okay, the most important things to remember here are how many particles, which is number, number variance, and what does this 10 mean? 10 means 10 new particles being emitted every single frame. So if you're on frame 10, you will have 100 particles in your frame, provided the lifespan is long enough, okay? So simply put, lifespan means how long the, the particle is going to last. So I'm going to set, this is going to have a really high number. While you're working on your effect, you can keep this down, maybe 20. And then when you're done with everything, before you render, you can turn it up to 100 and then go ahead and render. For now, I'm going to set this to 100. The lifespan is going to be about 75 frames and 25 variants. Now, if you hit play, we can see our particle sprites are being generated, but there's no explosion. It's just a steady stream of particles, which is not what we want. Go to frame zero, and I'm going to animate this number to zero. Then I'll go to one, animate to 100. And then I'm going to go to two and animate this back to zero. So now we have an explosion. Let's go back to the Style tab and improve our sprites a little bit. Oh, and if you guys are finding these videos useful, hit the subscribe and like button to let me know you want more of these videos. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or requests. And if you get stuck, shoot me an email and attach your comp, and I will do my best to help you out. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do back in the Style tab is work a little bit on my color. Okay, so I'm going to Park the playhead right around 10. 
So this is a little bit after the particles were generated. And then I'm going to go into color controls. So right now the default was the white color. I'm gonna go down here to color over life. So let's go with white for starters. The reason I'm choosing white is because I want a really bright uh, explosion. Next is gonna be reddish orange. So very dark orange. And it's gonna happen really, really fast after the white. Then I'm gonna move this down to something like a normal orange. Then I'm gonna wait a long time. For a while, this explosion will have this sort of yellow color. And then all the way at the end, it's gonna turn into sort of dark gray, which is gonna be the smoke. And then one more, which is gonna be lighter gray. But the key here is now, see this alpha transparency right here? So I'm gonna increase the, the transparency a little bit, okay? And then all the way at the end, I'm gonna make this lighter, going closer towards white, so very light gray, and I'm gonna increase the transparency even more. Now let's go ahead and preview this. That looks really good. Let's go to size. The overall size that we had set was six with a variance of two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click again on the line and generate another value, okay? And this value is gonna be say around eight, okay? And this is the passage of time going from left to right. So left is frame zero and right is frame, what was it, 75 was the lifespan or so? So that's that. So I'm going to say the size of the particle should be almost zero as it approaches frame 75. Now, you can work with this graph in the spline editor as well if you want some more room. Click on the emitter and click on size over life and hit fit. So now you could see a little bit better, right? So we got our sort of explosion and then we got our fade. Now I want to use some easing as well. So I want the explosion to be pretty uh, linear but the fade, I want it to have a little bit of a Bezier curve, so a little smoothing. So what I'm doing here is saying gradually start getting smaller and then go fast and then end. Let's go ahead and preview. And that right there is the meat and potatoes of this effect. You are done at this point. But knowing me, I gotta embellish, right? I gotta put in some details, you know? Gotta sell the effect, give it some oomph. <laughs> Next, what I'm going to do is give it a little glow. I'm gonna pipe this in, okay? For size from 10, I'm going to go to 100. So as you can see, there's a lot of haloing here, a lot of glow in the outside, and I'll leave everything else the way it was. Go to zero, uh, take this blend, and this is essentially the on off switch, right? So zero, and then I'm gonna to go to frame five and click on blend and bring the blend up to what it was, which was 0.2. And then I'm gonna go all the way to maybe frame 25 and bring the glow down. Okay, so the only problem now is that I have the glow on the outside of the explosion, which is the look I want, but I I don't really want it on the inside of the explosion because it's kind of giving it a soft look, you know, and I want that cartoon look. So how do I solve that problem? So what I'm gonna do is take the output from this renderer, right, and pipe it into the effects mask of the glow. I'm gonna hold down Alt and then let it go and choose the effects mask. So here what I'm saying is the particles are going in here for a glow and it's making everything glow, but it's also giving it the region where the glow should happen. And right now, the region is wherever the particles are, which is exactly the opposite of what I want, right? So I need to invert this. So go into glow and go to the second tab and just hit apply mask inverted. So now the inside of the particles are not glowing, only the outside is glowing. Let's go ahead and, and preview this. That looks awesome. So now I have this glow on the outside. The inside is as if there's no glow, which is just the look that I was going for. Now what I'm going to do is create copies of this system in smaller sizes. So I'm gonna take this, copy, 
paste back into the emitter and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and then copy paste and make this one even smaller. Okay. And if you want to be able to see what I'm doing, what you can do is add a drop shadow. And this is going to give you a little bit of 3D depth. So you can kind of see that, you know, one's on top, the smaller one, and the, the largest one is on the bottom, right? The problem is these particle systems are exactly the same as each other. So I need to go into the emitter and reseed. They're kind of the same. Uh, they have the same values, but they're reseeded. So they're kind of random compared to each other. Now, anytime I'm copying and pasting, I'm always asking myself, how can I do this without these extra nodes, right? What's a more efficient, elegant solution to doing this? One would be to use a copied instance. Another really efficient way of doing this would be to create a transform. And then you take your glow and you put it in there. And now what's happening is that this whole thing is going into the merge and this whole thing is duplicating into this transform. So I can just go into the transform, make the size smaller, and I have another copy of the particle system. The only drawback of doing this is I don't have the seeding. To get around that, I'm going to flip this vertically as well as horizontally. So it's kind of a little bit different, I guess. Let's go ahead and look at it. Yeah, different enough, I guess. That's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I lost my drop shadow. Wait a minute, still want that. Pipe this in here and some room. And what was it? 0 0.15. I can take that and copy, go to transform, control shift V. This is an instance and I don't have to change anything now. And then what I'm going to do is I'll make one more copy of this and I'm going to get rid of the glow because I only need the glow on the first two. I don't really need it on the other ones. And then here I'm going to make it smaller like that and reseed another transform. So I'm doing four systems but with only two. The two are the emitters and the other two are the transforms. I'm going to go here, make it smaller, and maybe flip it around randomly. That's good enough. Okay. The drop shadow is definitely too much. So let me turn that down. I'll get rid of the drop shadow on this. These top ones don't really need it. All right, let's go ahead and preview. That looks pretty good. Next, what I want to do is create a, a sort of a smoke drift. And to do that, I'm just going to take my first one and put it right here. Okay, I don't need a glow. I don't need a shadow for that. I'm just going to take this. Okay. And I can reseed this as well. So I'm going to go with 0 0.02 and I'm just going to give it, so I, I do want that movement towards the right, but I'll give it a little bit of a variance of 15. And I can already tell that it's way too big. So it's a little too much. So I don't need it to be 100. I could turn this down to maybe 50. All right, let's go ahead and preview. There you go. So now you've got a little bit of a drift going on. I'm going to turn this down, go into the merge here, and just blend this down to maybe 30%. And let's RAM preview this. All right, looking good. One more thing I want to do at this point is add a little bit of a shock wave. Okay. So how do we do that? Let me show you. Background and lips mask. Okay. Let's go ahead and view this in the viewer. So what I'm going to do is go to the first frame 
turn off solid and border width animate to zero. So leave it there. Then I'm going to go to frame five, animate the border width to 0 0.01. So it's going to be very, very thin. Okay. And then I'm going to go to frame 25 and border width back to zero. So let's see what that looks like. One more thing we can do is maybe give it a little bit of a, a size animation to a scale up. So I'm going to go into a transform node. So I'm going to go to frame zero, leave the size at one. And then I'm going to go to frame 25 maybe and animate the size to 1.1. So just a 10% increase, just very gentle increase like that. Let's see. So now I have this little burst, okay? So this is gonna become my region where my particles are going to emit from. Particle emitter, particle renderer, and go into the particle emitter and go to the region and say bitmap. Okay, so I'm saying take your particle region from this region, which is this circle, and then the rest can go in here. And now I can set it up really quickly for you guys. 10 is good. Lifespan 15. Lifespan variance 5. That's good enough. I'll go to style. Choose my favorite N gun. And I'm going to give it a little bit of an orangish, yellowish color. Uh, that's good enough. And of course, I've got to have a fade. Let's go with 0 0.2, 0 0.4. All right, let's go to size and say 0 0.5. So now I need to tell it when to explode. So frame 0 will be no particles. Frame one will be 10, and frame two will be off. Okay, 150. There you go, that's good. And then I can also give it some velocity, maybe 0 0.01, just a little bit of a drift angle. I do want not only a right side movement, but I do want it to explode outwards. So angle variation will be sort of 360. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. I can make it a little bit faster. And let's go to our media out, hit two, and preview. So the shockwave is too big though. That's the main problem here, right? I'm gonna change the size real quick. So I'm gonna go with 0 0.7 and Right here, I'm going to go with 0 0.6. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, perfect. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you guys learned something new and had fun. Hit the subscribe button to let me know you want to see more MoGraph tutorials for Fusion. Support the channel and let's grow the community together. My name is Sadi and I will see you in the next one. Bye!